why we stays on your neck. <laughs> and Otto Valin had a pair of nuts to step up. So many others didn't want to fight. Yeah. Pulev, Povetkin, Miller's out pop for a drug test. Dylan White's out pop for a drug test. Wilder's fighting Ortiz. Joshua's fighting Ruiz. Mm -hmm. Trevor Bryan's fighting Manuel Char. Who the fuck else is there in this country? <laughs> Around the world. Where are these? Where are they? Right. Otto right. Valin, ranked number four, WBA, six foot six. Undefeated 20 0. Who else is there? Could have boxed some guys, been knocked out three or four times in a row. Yeah. Well, that doesn't prove anything. Right. That doesn't prove anything. Do shit. Right. So. Uh, so I, that's why Otto Valin, because he had a pair of nuts and he stepped up to the plate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's required. Give respect to him. Respect. Yo, my dons, make sure you hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and obviously hit the bell for notifications. Now I gotta say. This last probably few months, I've got bored of doing Tyson Pillow Fist Fury videos because, unfortunately, the sad, sorry state his career's in, it's not very fun to report on. I know you, man, enjoy the videos, but from my point of view, I have to repeat the same things again and again. However, to Fury's credit, once in a while, he drops a nugget which is proper, this is this video here was an all time classic of delusion. Every time I think, yeah, we've heard it all before from Fury, he actually comes in with a banger. This video here was a banger, exclusive. No one got this video, this man is gassed. This fight here, I talk about Andy Ruiz not being well. Fury, Fury has fully lost the plot here. And I've got to be honest, Half of me blames these reporters. You got Michelle Joy Phelps sucking Fury off. You got ES News any suck back sucking Fury and Wilder off. You got this Don here blowing. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right, Fury. Yeah, it's true. It was wrong with that man. Re replay that clip out at the start of this video and listen. Don't focus on what Fury's saying. Listen to what the reporter's saying, gassing him up when he's talking his rubbish. Anyway, let's get to what Fury actually had to say. So he starts off by so essentially the interviewer says to him. Why did you pick Otto Wallin? And then Fury starts talking a whole load of homo stuff, which is weird anyway. I'll leave it, well, you can find the video yourself. The source is on the screen now, but listen. Fury starts talking this weird stuff about, oh, I love blonde, blonde haired men with blue eyes. It's weird. Like, it's one thing if you're actually homosexual. It's another thing to just try to pretend. It's just odd behavior, man. Proper odd behavior. I don't understand it at all. Weird. It's like, when, I remember when you're like nine or ten growing up. And people kind of pretend, pretend, or they say, oh, you're gay or whatever. Yeah, all right. Fury, you're a 35-year-old man now. It's time to grow up, grow up a bit, do you know what I mean? Weirdo. Anyway, so he gets part, he, he, get, he says that to start off with. And you can always tell when Fury feels awkward because he says stupid stuff like that. The man asked you, why Wallin? Why, is, why where's Wallin? And you start there, oh, because he's got beautiful blue eyes and all this blonde hair. Weirdo stuff. And then he drops in the bombshell. Oh, oh, yes, oh, Otto Wallin, here, here the, here the notes step up, oh, yes, oh, none, none of the others wanted it, oh, Hans and Joshua, Dante Wilder, oh, Povetkin, Pulev, oh, none of them ever wanted it, and you've heard there from a, from a wiretap again, Fury talking about how he don't, how no one else wanted it, Wh where's this guy been? Fury, you can't sit around turning down fights, this right here is Wilder 101, Wilder 101, Wilder sits around, Turning down fights. Then when people get booked in, Dillian White conveniently, oh, he had PD. Well, he didn't have PD when he called you out, did he? Dillian White was begging to do you again like he did in sparring way back before the Oscar Rivas fight. You were meant to be the Oscar Rivas fight, by the way. So let's not make out, oh, well, oh, yes, well, Dillian White, PD. No, you got called out two months ago, boss man. Simple. And then the other thing, oh, AJ with Ruiz. Oh, Anthony Joshua, he's fighting Ruiz. He wanted you back nine months ago. What about that? And this is the problem once again with the, with the level of reporting here. It's not reporting, it's fangirlism. And in a way, half of the people that, not all of them, but half of the people, you have to be a fangirl to turn up to these events. Like, from where I'm sitting, believe it or not, I support AJ or whatever, but I, I can guarantee you this, you'll never see me with a with a camera in someone's face asking them questions, I'm I'm really not that bothered. Now I might I'd probably do I'd probably do a phone call interview, but you, there's no way I'm chasing people around with cameras and and you know what I mean. It's going to be on a one to one basis, as in I don't know, you know what I mean. If 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 you end up knowing a fighter 
and you give him a phone call, that's a bit different, but n I'm not on no madness running around, that's the problem. This guy here, rather than sitting down with Fury and saying, wait a minute, Fury, you said you're fighting Wallin because no one else wanted it, and because everyone else is bo booked up. Well, explain Dillian White was chomping at the bit to get his hand on you again, like he did in sparring when he laid you flat. And all you man trying to deny the footage out there. <laughs> the footage is there, like it or not. Your, your main Don got laid flat. <laughs> Deep, speaking deep as Guardian dialect. You heard it there. Who else can speak that? That there is unique. It's like fingerprints or DNA. It, your DNA is your DNA. Yeah? Your Asgardian murmur is your Asgardian murmur. You heard Fury, no? I, I'm doing a. That there was a, that there was a, was a video clip of. Pure. Pure murmuring. You're done there. The same. If you go back and watch the Wilder fight, listen carefully. Block out the interview. Uh, block out the um, the commentators. You'll hear him. Simple. Anyway, as I was saying, all this stuff of a AJ wanted you nine months ago. Even Wilder. Wilder was the king of calling people out after they're booked up. But as I mentioned many times before, at least Wilder was still chomping at the bit to get his hand on you because you ain't got no power. Wilder's main fear is fighting someone who's young and got power. Fury's young and has no power. That's why Fury, that's why Wilder, sorry, wants to fight you. But don't come, don't, don't it, this video is so unique because <coughs> <coughs> because it proves that that, Wild, that Fury's fully lost the plot now. He's actually, like, my, my whole thing with Fury's been over this time that Oh yeah, Fury is, is a liar, he's always, he's always telling lies and not telling the truth. He's actually gone a full 360, meaning now, not only is he not, not only is he, he's actually saying people are ducking him. Do you know what I mean? He's actually saying, oh yeah, none of them wanted it. Wallian was the, was the next best one. As if he's like in the, in the AJ versus Ruiz situation, where AJ literally had to fight Ruiz because he was the next best in line. Wilder didn't want it, Fury didn't want it, Dillian White didn't want it, Miller didn't want it. Ortiz didn't want it, and literally Ruiz, in my opinion, opinion, probably was number six in line, as it happened. Let's not make up your fight in Wallin because no one wanted it. Everyone wanted it. And let me clear up the other thing quickly about this whole, Ha! Oh, yes! Ha! Oh, Alexander Povetkin! Ha! Oh, yes! Ha! Oh, Pulev! Ha! Oh, oh, ha! Yes! Ha! Oh, big nuts! Ha! Oh, Otto Wallin! He's got big nuts! Yes! D let's get something straight, as I was saying. <laughs> Tyson Fury, do you, are, you trying to tell, are you trying to get us to believe that that Pulev, who, who also fought your cousin for peanuts, and Povetkin, who now will also be fighting Huey Fury for relative peanuts. Well, he's with Vern Hearn now, so it probably won't be, but take that out of the equation. What I'm trying to say is, are you? I'm finding it hard to believe that Povetkin and Pulev were prepared to fight Huey Fury for probably 10 times less money than to fight you for 10 times more money. That doesn't make no sense to me. There's no way Povetkin or Pulev turned down the Fury fight. I don't believe it. Not not one chance. Not one chance. Because think of the prestige of it. Why why would Povetkin not want that? He's already just fought AJ. Why would someone not want to fight a man who's, who, who at wor absolute worst case scenario, you might be out jabbed two or three jabs around? That's literally the situation here, by the way. That's literally it. The worst case scenario after 12 rounds, cumulatively, you may have been, you may have taken 30 more jabs over the 12 round period. That's literally, the, the, that's literally what we're dealing with here. Fighters who fight Fury have to weigh up, are you prepared to do a 12 round fight and have taken 30 jabs more than you've given out? That's it. I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't believe that Povetkin or Pulev, and let's not get it straight as well, Huey Fury is a pretty similar model to Tyson Fury. No power. Don't don't have don't don't let his shots go on the inside. Well, Fury does actually a bit more. But my point is, no one. There's no way Povetkin wouldn't want that fight. There's no way Pulev wouldn't want that fight. Be be realistic now. Come out and be honest. And these reporters, as I say, they're they're, they're certified fangos anyway. But I blame them. They, no one wants to do it. And it makes me laugh. Where's all the LDBC at, the, at these places? They're too busy trying to chase down the real dons like AJ, who actually who's actually going to work. Why don't you man hassle Fury for a bit? That's where you man need to be. That's where you should be putting pressure on him. A man who's actually, and that's the funny thing. These LDBC dons, 
They talk about how much they support Wilder. Wait there a minute, Fury's the one ducking your man. If you spent less time fantasizing about AJ, well, we all know why they, they, they hassle AJ for, because guess what? AJ brings the money in. If you go to a Fury interview, no one ain't clicking that. And I know that for a fact. My, my Fury video is one of the worst ones I can do. If the truth be known, no one, no one, you know, he, people think he's a big name, no one really cares about him because he ain't doing nothing. He's living off stuff that happened, he's living off, he's living off one of the most boring fights, which happened four years ago, by the way. Unbelievable stuff. Anyway, let me see my other notes quickly. Oh yeah, Fury starts banging about, oh, where are they? Oh, yes, oh, Otto Wallin, got big nuts, oh, where are they all? Oh, number four in the WBO, right. As always, rank, talk, making up all these rankings and stuff that Frank Warren's bought and whatnot. And oh yeah, that's it. That's it. That's the thing. It was. He talks about how Fury, how Wallin's a perfect match for Wilder as well. Like oh yeah, and this this Wallin fight, he's big and tall. Um, that's why I didn't want to fight Oscar Evers or Povetkin because these guys are better, are perfect matches for Wilder. Are you joking? Your your perfect match is anyone who has power. Your problem, Fury, was not that you were getting out tickled. Your problem was, can your whiskers take a shot? And the answer after that Wilder fight was a resounding no. You need to be in there with dudes who, who can actually do something to you. Going in there with guys you can't punch, what does that prove? We know you're probably going to outbox people who can't punch. Your issue is remaining conscious. Your issue is not being put into a state where you're... Mm, mm, where you're doing Asgardian murmurs. Talk, talking to the whales and whatnot on that sonar thing. Mm, that's your issue. So you need to be in there when you've we've got to deal with the threat and the pressure of power. Wallin got no power. Schwartz just a complete stiff. If the, if if we're being honest here, but yeah. And he says this is what made me laugh as well. This is how you know he's fully lost the plot. He says um oh yes I could have fought someone who's been KO'd three or four times. Oh yes oh oh down there while oh that doesn't prove anything. <laughs> So he could have fought someone three or four times, but that doesn't prove anything. Like, as I said a second ago, he's lost the plot. Bro, do you actually believe that? You've just talked about you could have fought someone who's lost three or four times, but doesn't prove anything. Povetkin's lost three or four times. Pulev's lost three or four times. I'd rather you have fought them. In fact, I'd rather you have even dragged Vladimir Klitschko out of bed as a 30, 40, 43 year old who's lost three or four times. It's not about, it's about who you're fighting. You're picking out, and this is the problem with Fury, it seems they've got some weird thing going on. Oh, well, because he's undefeated. Fighting and undefeated bums are even worse. That proves that they haven't even dared get stuck in. At least the guy who's lost three or four times, he's actually been in there with someone better than himself. These guys, look at Schwartz, for example. I'm, I think Rollins better than Schwartz, maybe, but I'm not sure. We'll have to see, but Schwartz was undefeated, and he was completely useless. Absolutely useless. Got hit on the got hit on the noggin and didn't want to know. Checked out. Just slumped on the floor. And even then, Fury couldn't stop him properly. To be fair, so um. Oh, Wallin. Oh, he had the nuts. He stepped up. Oh, yes, up to the plate. Oh, I have to respect him. Talking about respect. Oh, I have to respect. Oh, we all have to respect him. And this reporter man's talking about. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. These guys, are <laughs> Fury's not well, man. He's been, I think he's been in America too long. He's been hanging around with Al Gaiman and Andy Ruiz, it seems. They're both, they're, they're both there festering together. Talking complete madness about you. you. need to respect him. What you need to do is fight a respectable opponent. Never mind you need to respect Wallin. Wallin's always going to get in there. Because he's it, like Schwartz. It's a payday for him. You, you're the one who keeps banging on about being the Neil champion. And this for me just sums it all up and it's funny, I've got another video coming out soon. Looking at the um the Mike Tyson interview with Tyson Fury. And Tyson Mike Tyson's asked him, What's coming up next? And Fury oh yeah, I've got a fight coming up next, then I'm fighting Wilder. Fury doesn't dare mention the name. And that just I felt almost sorry for Fury at that point because it just shows the fact he had to say, Oh yeah, I've got another fight, but then I'm fighting Wilder, he has to like he Mike Tyson didn't ask you what's your six month plan, he asked you what your next fight was, tell him what it is, but you can't because you know it's a complete muggins, and that's how, at least we actually know Fury has got some sanity, because if he'd truly lost the plot, he'd have been in there shouting from the rooftops about how, how he's fighting Wallin next, who's undefeated and who's number four, about no, who else is there, anyone else, that's, what, that's who is there, I'm trying to think, anyone, pick anyone, 
Gassiev would have done, Usyk would have done, Pulev, Povetkin, any one of the people who you've refused to fight would have done.